student Samachal Sharma, your educator. In this video, we are going to discuss another important concept and today we are going to discuss about what do you mean by learning? How many types of learning are there and how many types of learners are there as well? So what is learning? Learning is when you gain something. Just as important your teaching process is, the teaching would fail if there is no learner. So learn beca learning becomes more important than the teaching process. How you can say that there is learning being happening? Learning is always happening when there is a change in the behavior. When you look for the changes in the child's personality, then you say that that child has learned something. This change takes place through the experience or the practice. The child can learn either by again and again experiencing the same emotion or by practicing it again and again. Changes due to growth, there are changes due to maturation and inquiry cannot be considered as learning. But learning should be something very considerable, done very emotionally and very physically. There is a cognitive process also involved. The occurred change must be relatively permanent. It should not be done for a smaller period of time, but it should be permanent. That is, the learned response must last for a fairly longer period of time. So, when you have some growth and some mental change or you learn something that is there with you for a longer period of time and there is a change in the behavior also, you call it as learning. So, according to different theorists, they have given definitions of learning. While learning is a process, how can you say that learning is a process? So, according to some uh, definitions, we see that learning is what? The, he is an exponent, the hill guard is an exponent in the field of learning and according to him, learning is the process by which the activity originates or is changed through training procedure. So, the mind of the person changes through a given procedure. So, hence learning is a continuous process and it keeps on changing. So, not only one time but a longer span of time change done on a regular basis will help the person learn. While Bernard said that learning is a process by which an organism satisfying the will satisfy his own motives, adopt and adjust to situations in which it must modify its behavior in order to overcome the obstacles and the barriers. All the obstacles and the barriers that you encounter when you overcome them with, by doing certain processes, you call it as a learning. So learning is what? It's a gradual process. It's a process itself. It's a gradual process. It should be permanent in nature. There should be what? There should be some behavioral change. Learning ke characteristics kya hota hai? What are the characteristics of learning? Learning is the modification of the behavior and it is a very purposeful activity. When done with the purpose, it will give good results. So, the purpose and the nature of the learning is that you should gain something. In other words, learning is a very goal-oriented activity. You have some objectives already set and for that you are learning. Learning is continuous in nature. Just as learning is ever pervasive, you can learn from anywhere, from anyone, from MKO, more knowledgeable other or from a friend as well. Non-formal teaching, informal or formal structure can also be there. So learning as it is ever pervasive, it is continuous also. You keep on learning. Learning is also a universal phenomenon. Learning takes place anywhere, at any time, by all the organisms, in all the culture. It is an activity that is taken by all that are, whoever are living. Learning is progressive and developmental. So, there is a behavioral change. It is done for a longer period of time. So, there is a progressive behavior. You progress when you learn. You transform when you learn. Your personality becomes developed when you learn. Learning is transformable, right? You, it is transferable. Learning is transferable. How do you transfer the learning? Transfer in learning is very feasible. All the material, the things and the subject matter learned in one situation 
may be facilitated and inhibited in learning the other situation so learning is transferred learning is transferable first day you learned something in the class the second day you will link the concepts done on the first day to the concepts you are learning on the second day hence these linkages are very important this is how you learn you link the old knowledge and the new knowledge to create the full knowledge of the particular thing that you are learning learning includes all the three aspects of human behavior there is cognitive behavior affective and there is the psychomotor domain all of these domains are involved in the learning process we can classify learning in a dozen of ways how can you classify them you can classify them on the basis of different categories let us see first is the conditioning how do you learn you learn because of conditioning there is always some stimulus some response would be there some stimulus would be provided and the child can learn so when an individual learns a single response associated with a specific stimulus that is provided or a stimulus situation that is given to that person it is called as conditioning so we took an example of the dog that was uh, that, that was talked by ivan pavlov and we called that type of conditioning as the classical conditioning while the remuneration and the reward or the punishment processes that b f skinner talked about we called it as the operant conditioning so when you give stimulus response all of these kinds of conditioning are called as the all of these changes are called as conditioning so the child learns when conditioning happens there can be different subdivisions to this there can be classical conditioning talked by ivan pavlov there can be operant conditioning b f skinner talked about it there can be aversive conditioning what is aversive conditioning aversive conditioning is when you associate some phenomena with something negative so you know that smoking kills but the person is keep on doing you know the person is doing recklessly smoking and not paying heed to it so you can associate bad images with the smoking and the person would try to quit it sooner so this is aversive conditioning when you tell something negative about a particular situation or a particular thing the aversive conditioning can happen then we have the motor learning so what are motor skills learning may we also have the psychomotor that is the kinesthetic movements your hands are involved so when the psychomotor learning is done the skill is being learned you use your own hands to learn the things this type of learning can be swimming typing or it can be driving a car etc so you learn by doing things then you have discrimination learning we see that animals or the human beings discriminate between the different things they will discriminate between what to listen and what not to listen you can discriminate between the mother and a stranger you can simultaneously differentiate between a circle and a square so this differentiational learning is also one type of learning then we have what then under these discriminational learning you can learn by looking at the probability by looking at the probability by looking at the chances you can learn and come to conclusions there can be incidental learning some incidents can have a major impact and you can learn through them there can be reversal learning maybe you are getting rewards out of it so you will do it one day the rewards are stopped so you are also going to stop doing it reversal learning can happen then the verbal learning will start so verbal learning is the usage of words so this is the most important kind of learning of the human beings because it involves the usage of words that are being used and it can be informal if you talk about the small children also so verbal and of course sometimes non verbal learning also happens but it is basically seen in the domain of your other types of learning that we have already seen like the conditioning learning and other learnings right so the learning of language will come under it then of course we have already discussed about learning so nothing is new then comes the concept learning gradually you will understand the concept learning also concept learning means that the child starts or the human starts to understand the particular concept they will understand how to react to particular things 
a child's concept learning starts at a very young age at a very early age they try to learn about the various stimuli that are attached in the environment so they will learn about those concepts they learn about the labels like house like wood like fruit like a man girl etc so they will understand the concepts last the highest order of the learning is the problem solving learning so the problem solving learning is the highest level of learning also and it is the best kind of learning also in the problem solving a problem is given to the organism or they actually try to discover some of the relationships on their own by the environment some of the manipulation happens and the problem is solved in fact problem solving in human beings and the higher animals like the chimpanzees is a certain form of operant conditioning only we try to associate all the kinds of learning with the operant conditioning we keep on learning so these are what these are the few types of learning now on the basis of these learnings the child can make their own style of learning the child can learn through different learning styles so of course there is wak model of learning which talks about the learners who can learn through visual senses more so some learners would learn through the visual when they visually see the object or some pictures they learn more some by auditory learning that means they'll hear and then will understand better some will learn through what some will wak model hai wak some would learn through reading and writing and then k stands for kinesthetic some would learn from doing things by hands apart from this there can be other learning styles also that are repeatedly asked in the exam so what are these either the child can be field dependent or the child can be field independent abstract conceptualization can be there or there can be concrete experiences that can teach the child there can be experimental learning or there can be reflective learning now what are these let us revise the last two and then we'll talk more about field dependent and field independent because a lot of questions are asked from that type that type of learning so what is abstract learning sometimes the child is more better in learning through abstract conceptualization by using at the abstract words they try to relate with the things better that kind of learning is called as abstract learning these abstract learning is these are the learners who are quick to respond and they use their imagination a lot that is abstract learning while concrete experiential learning is that learning in which the child is basically focused on one thing so it's a concrete learning they have decided what to learn so there is no diffusion happening there is no divergent learning happening but it is a convergent learning then there can be experimental learning versus reflective learning so experimental learning happens when the child keeps on experimenting the things and then they land up to one particular solution but these type of learners will try by hit and try method and can take a longer period of time to reach to a particular situation but these experimental learners may be may be very slow when time when it comes to learning but their answer would be very much correct so they are not that curious to answer in the class but they know that they will study on their own they will find the answers and then by experiment they will learn things better then comes the reflective learners so the experimental learners are like bit like quick to respond so uh, they are very quick to respond while your reflective learners are those learners that will reflect on the things more and then they will come to the conclusion so i will repeat the experimental learner rely on their experiment their experiments they will experiment the things and then they will be quick to respond on the basis of their experiences while reflective learner they will reflect on the scenarios they will look at the you know different concepts that they have learned they will ponder upon it and then they will find the proper answers to it now let us discuss about the field dependent and the field independent learners so what is the word field here the field is anywhere where the learner is learning say for example in the school or in the college right so these learners are learning 
some are very much dependent on the school structure some are not that much dependent on the school structure so these are the two distinctions of the learners some are field dependent these field dependent learners are very much dependent on the classroom structure and the teacher on the curriculum as well while field independent learners are those that are independent they have their own thinking they are not recklessly following what the teacher is saying let us look at the distinction field dependent learners so field dependent learners prefer to work with others to achieve a common goal they prefer to come to the class and work together they like to cooperate they practice and learn they practice and learn right then there is they are like the global learners they will work with everyone then what happens they tend to perceive the whole field and the situation and focus on general meaning they are more relational so they try to build good relationships with others because they cooperate with the other people and with cooperation they will learn things better right then comes the field independent learner contrary to a field dependent learner field independent learner will do things on their own right so they are motivated by impersonal analytical activities and skills that do not and they do not hesitate in doing things on their own right so they motivate they are motivated by their own locus of control they are motivated by impersonal analytical activities that do not necessitate a group type approach so they do not want to work always in a group but alone they are alone warriors and can control themselves on their own they are less dependent likes to compete they are not liking the structure of a school more but they are more uh, they have more zeal they are they like to basically work on their own and to compete they want grades they want good marks and for that they will also put their own share of effort then they are they, there is a rational appeal without consulting others they use their own minds they are rational beings they know that they can find their own paths they are analytical learners rather than feeling too much they will analyze they are more rational kinds of learners tend to perceive elements independently of the concept or the context or the field and focus on the details so they are not completely focused on whatever the teacher is saying or the curriculum is saying but they will put their own rational efforts as well so these are the two important kind of learners there can be someone who is learning in an abstract way some in a concrete way but if someone is not dependent on the field or in the classroom but wants to work on their own you will call them what you will call them as a field independent learner but if they want to work in a group they are global citizens they are global learners they want to cooperate then they have the art of what cooperating with the others and this becomes what this becomes a field dependent learner contrary to them field independent learners are analytical they are rational they'll take their own decisions and they like to compete right so i have one question for you and this was asked in your paper june 2020 from the following list of learner learner characteristics identify those which are associated with field independent learners focus on facts and principles perceives the global aspects of concepts and materials prefers and likes to compete can organize information by himself or herself likes to cooperate what will be the correct answer these are the options so c is the right answer that means a c and d so a c and d so this is a b c d and e right so the first is focus on the facts and the principles so as i told you your field independent learners will try to find the solution on their own they are more rational they are the people who will try to find their own solutions they will work on their own so they will focus on the facts and the principles more then 
of they will not be global citizens so the global aspects the concept and the materials are irrelevant to them they will try to work on their own so two becomes the wrong option then you have the they, these kind of learners prefer and likes to compete they are more competitive they want to win they have this zeal to win and not to cooperate so this becomes the correct option then can organize information by himself or herself definitely they are field independent learners they are not dependent on someone so they can organize their own information according to themselves this becomes the correct option and if they like to cooperate they will become what field dependent so this becomes the wrong option again so a c and d is the right answer c becomes right these are the learners which like to compete they like to have the solution on their own they are focus on facts and principles and they can organize the information on their own let us quickly revise what we did so we discussed about different learnings and we discussed that what is learning first of all learning is a change that is behavioral change and it is happening for a longer period of time also it is relatively permanent in nature there is uh, there are different theorists who said that learning is an art learning is a science just as teaching is an art and a science then we have harvard gardner also harvard gardner said that there are multiple intelligence no child is uh, non intelligent no child you can say is dumb because there can be multiple types of intelligences he said that there can be intelligence related to mathematics related to your interpersonal skills so there are so many skills and when the child use those skills they can learn they can be appreciated so harvard gardner is a person who talked about multiple intelligence so intelligence or learning becomes a process in itself it is related to the person very deeply so learning with learning comes the satisfaction you can adjust with the situations can modify you can overcome the barriers and the obstacles then what will happen when then what did we discuss we discussed about different characteristics there is behavioral change learning is purposeful there is an objective and a goal oriented nature learning is a continuous process it's a universal phenomena it is ever pervasive it is progressive and developmental it is transferable and all the three domains are taking part in it then we discuss about the different types of learning that we have already discussed we discussed about classical conditioning operant conditioning and aversive conditioning then the child can learn through motor skills through discriminative learning through verbal learning concept learning then there can be what there can be problem solving learning then the most important thing was discussed that there can be field dependent field independent learners there can be some learners who are quick to respond and some can be who take a lot of time so these quick to respond learners will not complete the whole task in one go they will be very much impromptu to give the answers in the class these learners tend to do a lot of mistakes and then they learn while there can be one type of a learner who can take a lot of time but will reach to a proper solution there can be other types of learning like your concrete experiential learning or there can be abstract conceptualization learning there can be experimental learning and reflective learning there can be learners who are field dependent and field independent right so i hope you enjoyed the session i hope you have understood the things that we discussed as well if you have any doubt you can write it in the comment section thank you so much for attending